Welcome back. With Health Canada's approval of the Pfizer vaccine for kids under 12 finally announced today, parents and children have lots of questions and they've sent some of those to us. So we brought in two pediatric infectious disease specialists to provide some answers. Dr. Fatima Kakar joins us again from Montreal and Dr. Jacqueline Wong is in Hamilton. And uh, Dr. Wong, let's start with you and this question. I'm Yashi Murphy. I have two kids under 12 years of age and I have been holding off on giving them the flu shot because I was concerned that if they did get the flu shot, there would be a delay in them getting the COVID-19 vaccine. Is there an advised waiting period between the flu shot and the vaccine? So with today's announcement, NACI has recommended, especially with the initial rollout of this vaccine, that people wait 14 days between the COVID vaccine and any other vaccine or in whatever order you choose to do it. Um, and it's mainly so that it's easier to monitor for any side effects that might be related to the COVID vaccine. So that's the reason for that period there. Um, it's hard to know exactly when the rollout date will be, for especially for different parts of the country. So it's not unreasonable to go ahead with the flu vaccine and that way your child's body has a chance to build immunity to it while you're waiting for the vaccination clinics to open. And Dr. Kakar, next question to you. This is from Yashi's uh, daughter. Hello, my name is Akira and I'm 10 years old. I want to know if the vaccine hurts and if I fall sick or am I, can I stay home from school? Okay, well, the vaccine will hurt a little bit, but usually by the time you count to five, it's over. And the side effects, so your sore arm and things like that, are actually much lower in kids than they are in older adults. So in all likelihood, you'll be able to go to school the next day or that same day. Yeah, so let me follow up, uh, Dr. Kakar, on that, because one of the things I found really interesting when adults were getting the vaccine is how different they reacted. Some people were kind of flat in bed for 48 hours, they would report. Others, it's almost like, you know, nothing happened at all. Could we expect the same kind of range of side effects, I guess, among children? I think we're actually going to see lower side effects. So the, mm -hmm. because the dose is specifically lower, they actually should have less of those systemic effects. And the, the side effects we usually see are actually after the second dose. And so by delaying the interval, we're likely going to actually have less. But we will probably see a range as we did with adults. Yeah, interesting. All right, back to uh, viewer questions. And this one for you, Dr. Wong. Hi, I'm Wendy. And my question is this. If the symptoms for COVID-19 are generally mild in children, why is there a need to vaccinate them? This is a very common question that we're getting. I think there's two things to separate. So first of all, of course, we want an effective and safe vaccine that's available for children. But in terms of a family's individual decision to decide to go ahead with it, it does need to be an individualized decision kind of based on that child's um, medical history, as well as some of the concerns that that family might have. So, you know, if the, for the family, this pandemic has been very stressful and they haven't felt comfortable letting their kids interact in society, this vaccine is an important step forward for those families. Similarly, if there are other um, members in the household that might be more susceptible to severe illness, sometimes having the kids get their vaccination and preventing um, or further preventing that virus from entering the household, that might be another reason why families might choose to go ahead and get their children vaccinated. But you're right. Thankfully, we've seen that the um, severity of the illness in kids is quite low, thankfully. Yeah, really interesting answer. This is the easiest interview I've ever done. I'm just playing the role of traffic cop. And uh, and Dr. Kakar, this uh, next viewer question is for you. Hi, I'm Gwilin from Burnaby, BC. Can we expect an annual booster for this vaccine, similar to the annual flu shot that we get? Sure. Um, so in, in all likelihood, I say in all likelihood, we probably will. Now, everything changes with COVID, but until we have global control of this virus, uh, it's going to continue to circulate, and so we will have waning immunity. So I will say most likely we're going to need an annual booster until we have it under control essentially everywhere. Yeah, and, and I like your disclaimer, right? There's so much about this that we're learning as we go and things change, but yeah, that's the sort of best answer as of right now. And just to uh, change up the order a little bit, Dr. Kakar, let's put the next question to you as well. My name is Chakar from Valmont, BC. My question is, what is the difference between the adult and children's vaccine? Is it just the dose or has the vaccine also been updated to offer a higher efficacy against new variants of the virus? 
So there are a few differences between the, the doses. So the, the dose is smaller, so it's 10 micrograms as opposed to 30 micrograms. The formulation, so the buffer, the solution that's used is different because it's more stable in kids. And the final amount that we actually administer is going to be different. It's 0.2 versus 0.3 mLs. And the vials are different themselves, so they're the orange tops versus the purple gray. But the actual mRNA that we're using is the same, so it's the same level of protection that the adults have had. It hasn't changed or been modified for Delta. I love the fact that you know all those numbers and even the color of the cap, so it's going to be very clear <laughs> which dose uh, goes uh, to who. Uh, the next question goes to Dr. Wong. Hi, I'm Patricia, and I'm a concerned grandmother of kids five years old and younger. I'm wondering if children five to 12 get as sick with COVID as older children, and what you can tell me about long COVID in children in that age group. These are great questions that we're getting this evening. So um, again, thankfully in kids, we're really not seeing the same degree of severe illness as we're seeing in adults. And certainly with the younger age group, so in this case, you're talking about five to less than 12, their illness tends to be quite mild. Um, and we're talking about like acute infections with COVID and not some of the complications that sometimes kids can get. With regards to the questions about long COVID, that's a little bit harder to answer because there isn't a very... Um, um, clear and consistent definition for COVID and the studies that have been done are quite heterogeneous. But what we do know, like other viruses like the flu or even mono, um, there are some children who continue to have symptoms after the acute infection is gone. But what the other reassuring piece is, most of these kids will work through those symptoms um, within the month or a few months after the infection and do just fine afterwards. We have a minute left, and, and maybe I'll ask this final question to each of you, Dr. Kakar, beginning with you. If a parent walks in the door and says, I have some doubts about this uh, vaccine for my kid, how are you going to deal with that? So first thing, it's really important to know that there's no urgency. We can take the time to have this discussion. And we're going to go through the risks and the benefits. And I really want to explain to them the multiple benefits that are going to be there for their child and what we've done to really minimize the risk. So. Bottom line, there's time to have this conversation and we'll be discussing the risk benefits for their child. And Dr. Wong, anything you'd add to that? At the end of the day, we want families to feel comfortable and confident in the decisions that they make and also realizing that what they feel comfortable with now may change. So making sure we have a good working relationship with our families so that as new information comes up or new questions come up, you know, our door is open to have these conversations again. I know you're setting aside time to answer those questions among your patients, and we appreciate your time this evening. Thanks to both of you. Thank you. Thanks for having us.